Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Nathan, and as we welcome you to worship this morning, I want to invite you to welcome one another. So please check in on Facebook or Zoom in the comments, and then as you see your friends and neighbors coming online, say hello to them. We're glad that you are here for worship this morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm John Natwick. And I'm Connie Natwick. Thanks for joining us today for worship at Elk River Lutheran Church. We're really glad you're here. Hi, this is Dale Ziner with Reddit. Thank you for coming to join us for worship here at Elk River Lutheran. Glad you could join us. Harding, staff member at Elk River Lutheran Church. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. We're happy you're attending today's online worship service with us. Kevin Greg Folia, welcoming you to Elk River Lutheran Good morning. Church. I'm Gloria Stricker. Hi, I'm Ron. We're glad to be with you this Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. We're glad you're here. We are Tom and Luann Wingard at our potato farm. Hi. Hi. We are the Rots family. I'm Emily. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm Adrian. I'm Everett. And I'm Ivy. Welcome to worship at Elk River Lutheran Church. We're happy that you are joining us today. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. Good morning. Where are the cooks? Oh, Judy. nice to see you all. Hi, I'm Paula Donnelly. And I'm Pat Donnelly. Welcome to Sunday Morning Church at Elk River Lutheran. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Nathan, and I'm so glad that you are joining us. You're probably joining us from home online here this morning as I'm recording this from home as well. Well, uh, it's great to have you. When we gather in the church for worship, we're often able to shake hands and give hugs. And that's a little trickier online, but there is a way to greet each other online. The first way is to just check in, say hello. So please, in the comments or the chat section on Facebook or Zoom, check in and say, hi, I'm such and such, watching from such and such place. And then as you see your church friends and neighbors checking in, Say hello to them. You can reply to their comments saying, Hi, good morning. Haven't seen you in for so long. Glad that we're here together in worship this morning. It might not be quite the exact same as an in-person handshake or hug, but greet each other digitally. So please, check in this morning. Greet your friends and neighbors. We're so glad that you're here for worship this morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. We're glad you're here. 
We're the Glassos. I'm Matt. I'm Carter. And I'm Chase. And we've been members of Elk River Lutheran for about seven years. And we're happy to see you. Hi, I'm Karen Maher. And this is my husband, Harry. Come as you are and be who you are. from Pete, Linda, Kyle, and Hank. So glad you came. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Bonnie. We, we are, are the Smiths. Smiths. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship, worship at Elk River, River Lutheran Church. Church. We are glad to see you. this morning. We're happy to have you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Nathan, and we are so glad that you're joining us for online worship this morning. A number of years ago, I did a sermon talking about how we, each of us as individuals, are little mirrors called by God to reflect the light and love of God wherever we are. Well, that's never been more true as we gather for worship from all different places around the city, around the state, and around the world. Uh, we're glad that you are at worship here this morning, that you are ready to be filled and then ready to be sent forth to reflect the light and love of God wherever you are. And so as we gather here this morning, we invite you to check in, let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and then as you see your friends and neighbors getting online as well, say hello to them. We're glad that you are here. Good morning and welcome. We're the Horners. I'm Adam. I'm Kelly. I'm Audrey. I'm Catherine. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship. worship. Welcome to worship. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lily Haft and welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. Good morning. Um, I'm Donna Matheson and my husband Doug Matheson and we welcome everyone. Cedric and Marlis Olson, welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church on a great Sunday morning. We're so glad you're here. Hi, my name is Kill Warnson. And I'm Jennifer Stanley. And you to Elk River Lutheran Church. Well, good morning and welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church Online. We are glad that you are here and hey everybody, Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Happy New what? Year. Now you might be I thinking, don't get it. you might be thinking he's more off his rocker than normal. You are uh, off aren't we rocker. just supposed to start putting out Christmas decorations and I'm skipping ahead? Nope. Well, today <laughs> is the first Sunday in Advent, which is the beginning of the new church year. The what? Uh, yes, the church year begins with the season of Advent. And so uh, we are so thrilled to have you here with us this Advent season where we're embracing the theme joyous light. And so you may notice things look a little different uh, here around us with the blue lighting and the Christmas tree. And uh, we are ready for the season of Advent and Christmas. And so welcome to worship here this morning, everybody. Uh, the season of Advent is a season all about uh, anticipation and 
waiting and uh, kind of a, a longed for joy. And so I think that fits pretty well. Uh, but we also had the idea and the thought that this is also a year where we would we could all probably use a little bit of extra joy. Fair enough? Yes. Uh, and so during this Advent season on these Sunday morning services, we're going to be uh, doing Christmas songs and hearing uh, bits and pieces of the Christmas story and just really leaning into the joy of this season as well. But then we'll also invite you to Sunday evenings at 630 to have uh, a contemplative evening vesper service where it'll be uh, the music will be holding evening prayer and it will be a more uh, contemplative service more uh, I guess even a little more somber you could say and more on the themes of Advent a little less Christmassy and so uh, it's kind of a way of getting the best of both worlds I think where we can uh, enjoy and celebrate the joy of Christmas for a little longer we'll just stretch it out a little bit this year uh, but also acknowledge those Advent themes as well and so joyous light is what we'll be celebrating this next month and a half and uh, we're glad to have you here. This morning we're going to be hearing about Mary and Joseph and their part at the beginning of the Christmas story. And so uh, welcome to you all. Uh, let's do it some introductions. What do you say? Uh, I've been talking a lot. Uh, I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran, main talker. <laughs> True that. Lisa Sampson, Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry. Jeremy Halkus, Intern Pastor. I'm Taylor Quinn, the Director of Music Ministry and Worship. Welcome. I'm the talker, too. <laughs> All right. Well, what are the other announcements before we get started here? Oh, uh, it's me. Yes, it's you. <laughs> so uh, if you want to follow along with the service, um, we'll do some prompts on the video. But if you want something to look at, we have a PDF available, a PDF of the bulletin on our website at elkriverlutheran.org. Um, we will also, um, as is the tradition of every Lutheran church in the world. Uh, there's a coffee hour that we host after a service called uh, the Third Sacrament, and it is uh, you just join us join us on Zoom, and we'll do about 40 minutes of fellowship and conversation. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, you can, if you would, like us on our Facebook page, uh, share, comment, all those great things. Tell us how you're doing. Check in on those spaces as well. And I see a number of our Zoom family are doing that as well. But please uh, make sure you let mm -hmm. us know how you're doing and where you're from. Mm -hmm. um, also, you'll notice today that we are uh, having communion at worship. So if you haven't gotten your elements, your bread, your wine, your juice, your crackers, whatever it is that you have at home, uh, please go grab those things. We wanted to celebrate with you that joy of communion. Yep, and kids, um, jump over to Zoom also. We'll have Zoom Kids this morning. We're going to dig more into the story of Mary and Joseph and have some fun together. So join me there. All right, and so with that, we'll enter into our first song. Any word about this song, Taylor? No, let's open with Do You Hear What I Hear? i 
spread the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring goodness and light. All right. Well, thank you for those of you who are singing along at home. Uh, we can hear you in our hearts. I think, in our right? hearts. Yes. <laughs> well, I know a few folks have uh, jumped on, so let us introduce ourselves once again and welcome you. Uh, I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran Church. I'm Lisa Sampson, director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry. Jeremy Halquist, intern pastor. And I'm Taylor Quinn, the director of Music Ministry and Worship. And again, welcome to Worship. This is the season of Advent that we are in, and so uh, we are excited to be in this Christmassy, Adventy kind of mood. And one part of the Advent tradition is lighting Advent uh, wreath candles. And so uh, at our wreath here at the church, you can see behind me, we have one candle lit already. Uh, but we invite you, if you have Advent wreaths at home or any candles at all, uh, you're sure welcome to light them during this time of the Advent wreath. We're gonna be inviting families to light Advent wreaths uh, at home. And um, you'll never believe which family is starting it off. <laughs> my family and uh it was a little touch and go whether this video would uh, get get made or not uh our house is a little chaotic uh, these days uh but so uh let me uh send it to the mugas family home uh to uh light advent candles and again uh if you have uh candles at home we invite you to light them as well okay okay ready one two three we are the Mugas family. And I'm Nathan. I'm Trudy. This is Ben. And I am Stanley. And I'm Annie. And this is Benjamin. Memo, Mugas. <laughs> Light the candle. All right, today we celebrate the joyous light of Christ as Mom, we light one candle. You can be <laughs> yeah, Ben breathe. Light the candle. Light candle. Good. Scripture tells us, then God said, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Psalm chapter 43, verse 3. Let us pray. Just want to hold your hands. Let us pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Fill us with this whole world. Fill us in this whole world. Okay, I better start this prayer again. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Fill us with. Just finish. Okay. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Fill us in this whole world with your joyous light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> Candles lit. Got it. Check. <laughs> so uh, if you all are a little uh, nervous about uh, doing the candle lighting with your family at home, I've tried to set the bar low for uh, nice. how smoothly it uh, can nice. go. Nice. Uh, that's a little taste of, uh, of our world at home, what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, fun, but that's a part of the joy of Advent is lighting these candles at home and here at church as we work our way around the wreath and toward uh, the Christmas 
day holiday. And so um, today we are going to hear a little bit of the Christmas story. We're going to be hearing some about Mary and Joseph. Uh, there are characters we're going to focus on uh, in uh, the story this morning. And so uh, our reader for this morning is Connie Natwick. And so uh, let's let Connie read to us our scripture reading. The reading comes from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Here ends the reading. Well, thank you, Connie, for reading. Uh, it's great to hear your voice and to see you there reading. Uh, and Taylor, we're going to hear a sung version of that song a little later, right? Uh, yeah. After the yep. sermon time? Yep. Yeah. Of the Magnificat, Mary's uh, song. And so uh, it's a little longer than the section that we heard, but we got to hear a little bit of it this morning. And as I said at the beginning, we're going to hear a little more about the story of Mary and Joseph. And uh, maybe that's all the introduction I need to give for this sermon short. Uh, we'll send it to the, the sermon short. And I had some help from some uh, wonderful actors, as you will see. And so uh, let's go and dive into the story of Mary and Joseph this morning. Here we go. Y'all, this is amazing. I just got a video message from the past. It was sent through time from Mary and Joseph from the Bible. So I just gotta share it with you. Here it is. This is my fiance Joseph and we're getting ready for our wedding when life got turned upside down. I had just said yes to the dress. And we have the reception booked at the Four Seasons Total Camel Rental. We have a caterer and a great little band, Nathan, Nathan and the Nazarenes, for the dance. And then bang! bang! In the middle of the night, an angel appeared to tell me that I was going to have a baby. At first, I was scared, obviously, but after the angel told me that this baby is actually the Most High, the Son of the Most High, and that God needed me to do this really important job, I felt pretty special. Mary told me about this big news from the angel, and at first, I didn't take it very well. But then God appeared to me in a dream and explained the whole thing, and it was exactly like Mary said. It was a lot to process, so I went to visit my cousin Elizabeth, and she was, and she really helped me to see what a blessing this is. That's when I was moved to sing a song celebrating how great God is and how blessed I feel to be chosen for this special job. Life was hard and scary enough. And then we got the news that we actually had to take a trip to Bethlehem for the census because my great, 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 well, lots of greats, grandpa was King David and he was from Bethlehem. So we had to take this, with a baby on the way, we had to take this very long, tough trip. I sure hope we can find a place to stay. I keep refreshing Airbnb and it's not looking good, but I trust that God will provide. Well, me too. What cool technology to get a message through time and space from Mary and Joseph and about the Christmas story and what a story it is. 
You know, it's hard to overestimate just how much of a disruption Mary and Joseph experienced. Their life was heading in this one ordinary, typical, normal direction, and then bang! Just like that, a little baby changed their lives forever. Changed the world forever. Earlier, we heard the scripture reading where the angel Gabriel visits Mary. And while she's scared, Mary's reaction is ultimately one of faith. But she is nervous and more than a little unsettled. And so Mary leaves town for a while to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, who she hopes will provide her a listening ear and a place where she can lay low and hide that little baby bump from folks who may look at this not yet married pregnant woman with judgment. And Elizabeth gives her so much more. She helps Mary to cut through the anxiety and see that the magnitude and the blessing of this job that she's been called to is simply amazing. And Mary is moved to song, singing words that we call the Magnificat. I won't sing them for you, but I will speak them. Here's what Mary says. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Well, then there's Joseph. <laughs> In the little skit, Mustache Joseph admitted that when he found out the big news that Mary was pregnant, he didn't have the best of reactions. In fact, the Bible says this, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose Mary to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. Classy move, Joseph. <laughs> I mean, yes, technically, you could go back and look at first century marriage and legal codes and you would see that he could have imposed a much harsher punishment on Mary. But still, Joseph, come on. <laughs> the thing is, this news was enough to make Joseph's mustache curl. <laughs> well, fortunately, God speaks to Joseph in a dream and says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And then, right in the middle of this story about God speaking to Joseph, the Gospel writer Matthew does this interesting thing and he drops this little note right into the middle of it, which I think is important for us. It says this, All of this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So where is God in this story? And maybe a more pressing question for us today is, where is God in our lives? Well, you'll notice in this story, God is extremely active and busy helping this young couple navigate this major disruption in their lives. God is with them as God shows up in the form of angels speaking to them, in the form of dreams, and even in the form of people like Mary's cousin Elizabeth. Through these characters, God brings comfort to Mary and Joseph, taking them by the hand and leading them down the path that is laid ahead of them. We can trust that God is doing the same for us as we navigate this major disruption that we're all experiencing collectively, but each in our own individual ways. The same baby who was a major disruption to the life of Mary and Joseph is our hope. Jesus is Emmanuel. God is with us. The light of the world that shines in the darkness and no darkness can overcome it. God continues to hear our prayers and to show up in our lives. And God has put people in our lives who really care. We are not alone. God is taking us by the hand, cutting through our fears and anxiety and leading us through this major disruption down the path set before us. Thanks be to God. Let's go. Amen. Nathan and the Nazarenes back on tour July 2021. Get your tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, first off, big thank you to Audrey and Catherine. Am I right? Uh, Mary and Joseph. Uh, I wrote this little uh, 
script for them and they brought it to life in a beautiful way. So thank you girls for doing that. And uh, I will say, even though I wrote the script, the one part that I didn't write was the name of the band, Nathan and the Nazarenes. That was, I think, Lisa's creation. <laughs> and then uh, Audrey put together the, the poster. And so that was what was included at the end. So uh, nice. look out for uh, Nathan and the Nazarenes coming on tour soon. Yeah, but, look out uh, for I think we're the Nazarenes, which is really <laughs> frightening. There we go. Uh, but so thank you girls for helping that story come alive in that, that, that fun was way. That very nice. Yeah, very good. Awesome. I love the mustache, <laughs> Joseph. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love this part in your, your sermon too, Nathan, that you talked about this holy disruption, ultimately, mm-hmm. right? This sense of um, sort of living into the chaos that yeah. surrounds them in that moment. Mm-hmm. And it had me thinking a little bit about how do we experience that even in our own. I mean, this year has been all of the disruption. Yes. Mm-hmm. We talked about the holidays and all oh this sort gosh. of craziness, mm-hmm. and it just it feels like this big interruption but yet there's still something in that i mean i think there's still this holy moment in that so i'm curious how you guys have experienced that this year too well i my first thought was that mary was going through that alone at least we Mm -hmm. have each other yeah and all of us together dealing with this disruption but Mm -hmm. yeah wow it is a disruption and it's becoming normal which is sad well that's you know i as i was thinking about this whole theme and preparing so one of the things i thought about was when uh annie and i had teddy when when teddy was born we had been married for at least five years i can't remember exactly how long i'd have to count back and do the math but uh we'd been married for a while and then we had this baby and he turned our lives upside down it was a major disruption uh he was a bad sleeper so nights were tough and you know i remember not long after he was born a handful of times people would come to us and they'd say I bet you don't even remember what life was like before you had him. And we'd go, yep, we do remember. It was awesome. We were footloose and fancy free, right? <laughs> we used to sometimes think we were tired. <laughs> you know, we used, to say, you know, we used to think we were busy all the time. Hmm, you know, that perspective had changed. And so it was this like major disruption. And now it's like six years later, all of a sudden, you know, I do barely remember what life was like before him. And so, like, it's like that disruption has kind of changed. Some parts of it, you know, are normal. Large parts of it are just like our normal life now and, and, and you know, parts that we love. And so it is good that we've kind of forgotten the difficult parts of that disruption and mm-hmm. really lean into the things that are great about it. And I think with this pandemic, we're kind of in a similar place where, yes, it's this major disruption still as much or more so than ever now. Um, and yet, uh, you know, parts of it we're maybe getting used to a little bit. But I think the holidays have been a reminder with Thanksgiving and Christmas that, oh, yeah, we're not this isn't normal right Right. this disruption it was almost like it kind of hit again this week and as we look towards christmas it's hitting again right you know it's still a disruptive time yeah yeah i was thinking that too is that back in march we were disrupted with the pandemic and now we have to kind of almost get redisrupted disrupted with this and we have to learn how to figure it out again it's a little it's a little crazy. <laughs> I think I'm I'm in mourning uh, for the planning. I put Christmas up um, yesterday, and I'll finish today. And I am not. It was fun to decorate, but nobody's really going to see it. Yeah. And and I have thought, mm-hmm. oh, and I hung my kids' ornaments on the trees, and so I took pictures of them and and um, sent them. But yeah, it's really sad. I'm I'm disheartened. Yeah, we uh, we do a holiday party every year, and uh, and we started our decorating yeah. yesterday. We put up the tree. That's it. Um, but I'm looking at all these decorations. I'm going, all these decorations are really so that our house looks festive when we have this party and we're not having it, you know? But don't you think it's important to still go through that? I mean, I I actually thought about that and I went, no, I still have to put this stuff up because it brings me joy. Yeah. And I remember, I reminded myself of that too, is that this isn't for other people necessarily. Like how about I put it up for me, (laughs) you know, my husband. So, right. I think it's interesting, like, for me, as I'm thinking about this, Advent is this sort of anticipation of Christmas. It's this, like, waiting and longing for the Messiah to come. And now we're people here gathered around the table who know that Christmas is already here. Yeah. And so we live in this joy of that Christmas will come whether we like it or not. <laughs> Christmas will come yeah. no matter what the circumstance. And Jesus enters in. And for us as people, that's the piece I'm going to hold on to the tightest this year is, yeah. is the mm-hmm. hope that comes with the holiday. 
and yet still kind of living in that anticipation, that yeah. fear and worry and all the stuff that's going on. But I'm I'm longing for that Christmas day. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that for me that for me is the joy. I'm wondering if it's going to make us appreciate what it is more without all the noise, the parties and the yeah. gatherings and the planning and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Less I'm busy. Hoping. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. Oh my gosh, that's a welcome disruption. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is true. Not all disruptions are bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to say my friend Keith came over. Um, to, we had a fire last night and we were socially distant um, but he introduced a song to me it was called Joy and by Tracy Thorne and it is a really cool song because what we're talking about really kind of fits with this song it, one of the sentiments that she talks about how in this time of year we experience so much darkness but it's in the darkness that light is brighter and more beautiful yeah. right yeah. And I really thought that was, it was so fitting to hear that from him and into and going into our series, Joyous Light. Yeah. Is that we have to, we can remember that this is the darkest time of the year. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of disruptions that cause us to experience darkness. But the beautiful thing is that this year, this time of year, also there's so many lights. And lights are brighter when there's yeah. darkness and more beautiful. And uh, I wanted to share that today just because yeah. I thought it's really kind of fitting with mm -hmm. what we're experiencing because I think disruptions can be really <laughs> bad and hard and yet good can still come from them right yes yeah I think it was sort of Teddy being born obviously some good came out of that we're glad that he was born we're glad that he's in our, our life but that doesn't make the the time any less hard it was still right. hard and that's what really stood out to me about the story of Mary and Joseph as I dug into it this week was you know that was a hard time for them on multiple levels right. for each of them both of them you know right. and and yet obviously some pretty great good for the whole world came out of that and i think that's true of this big pandemic disruption too like it's not good like it's bad like i think we can all agree with that this is a bad thing and yet I think there's some good that can come out of it. I think God is active in this whole time, bringing about good out of a really difficult time. And, and, right. and that's a part of the hope of the Advent season is this anticipation that, you know what, I don't know what exactly the, the good for this Christmas is going to be. I don't know exactly what new beautiful things are going to come out of this time. But I trust that something will. Something, that doesn't yeah. mean there won't be mm -hmm. some really hard and bad parts mm -hmm. of this year, because there will be those too. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, God is this joyous light who's in our midst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm reflecting too, but one of my absolute favorite memories of Christmas in general every year is the moment when we go to light the candles mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And you watch this sort of darkened space, and one light gets lit, yeah. and it passes. And eventually you start seeing this room just come alive. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking about the sense of how do we as a church and community gathered live into that moment where light becomes contagious. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the space where we can dwell as much as anything else. Yeah. Well, I'm drawn back to how Mary responds to the fear and the anxiety when prompted by the help of her cousin. <laughs> you right. know, like she didn't get there on her own, which I think is worthwhile to think about too. Uh, but when Elizabeth helps her see the blessing in, in all that is going on in this disruption, she's moved to song, to this Magnificat, the, my soul proclaims your greatness, O God. And so uh, we heard some of those words in the scripture reading this morning and in the sermon short, uh, but I'd sure love to hear the sung version too. Taylor, you want to tell us a little bit about this song that's prepared here? Um, it's in our hymnal. We sing it every year, yeah. actually. I mean, it, yeah. I, Every every Advent, you're talking about Mary and Joseph, and it's just a great song. I don't really have much to say about yeah. it, but I've always liked Magnificats. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. just this 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 song of Mary songs put to music is kind of nourishing. Yeah. So. And so as we hear, I think about these words of faith where Mary is moved to to sing and proclaim God's goodness, but that she didn't get there on her own. I think that's yeah. a helpful takeaway part of it. And uh, how can we each lead each other and share that light make that light contagious so that we all together can see the joyous light in the midst of some real darkness mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. i think that's a that's a good calling for us all to uh meet together here this year and so uh with that we invite you into a time of song
Well, I hope you all were sing along. Uh, that is the Magnificat. Uh, so next, we actually have a special video from uh, the Land of Lakes Choir Boys. Um, I asked them to send in a video of them singing a song they're going to sing throughout this Christmas season. They have some concerts coming up. Uh, find them on Facebook. Uh, they've they've got uh, some concerts coming up. They're going to um, they're going to broadcast on Facebook. So check them out. But as a uh, as a uh, a way of meaning uh, making our service a little bit more meaningful, I asked them to sing this song. It's called "Alleluia, Rejoice," and it is from the the group uh, from Land of Lakes Choir Boys. They're called Concertate, and this is uh, this is them. So enjoy.
Well, thank you, choir boys, for sharing uh, your music with us. Uh, just gorgeous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just gorgeous. Uh, over the years, we've enjoyed having them here in person for uh, you know performances during our worship services. And so uh, when that's not an option, it's great to have them uh, here via video as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, like we had said earlier, you can check them out online. Uh, well, we're going to continue with a time of confession and forgiveness and Holy Communion. And so we'll start with confession and forgiveness and then move into Holy Communion. So if you have your communion elements close by, that's great. That's perfect. If not, uh, maybe better uh, scoot to go get those quick to get some bread and wine or juice and crackers, uh, whatever you can find that we trust that God will uh, use those earthly elements to deliver that promise, that word of God, that gift of forgiveness, new life and salvation. And then following communion, be invited into a time of prayer, a time of guided prayer, as you will see. And so uh, we'll continue with those pieces now. So let's go. Blessed be God, Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now with the promise of God's forgiveness fresh on our hearts, we continue with Holy Communion. Join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. As you prepare to receive these gifts of Holy Communion, we then invite you to enter into a time of prayer where you'll hear some music and guided prayer. And so we'll follow the blessings of Holy Communion with a time of stillness and prayer. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Pause, take a deep breath. Give yourself permission to pause the noises of the day and to listen. What word or phrase did I hear today that challenged me, comforted me, or needs more reflection. Who or what have you been called to pray for today? We invite you to write those prayers in the comments. God of all mercy and consolation, we entrust these prayers to you, knowing that you hear the prayers of your people. Remember us, gracious God, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, thank you for entering into this time of prayer. If you'd have other prayers that you would want to uh, share, we invite you to share those either in the comments or uh, via the link to our website uh, to share prayer concerns. Um, yeah, we thank you for that. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our time of offering. Uh, we are so thankful for you uh, this Christmas and Advent season and for uh, your presence with us here this morning. Uh, if you'd like to give to support the mission and ministries of Elk River Lutheran, you can do so via our website, elkriverlutheran.org. There's a link for that in the uh, original comment post as well. Um, or else you could give via the mail or the mailbox that's outside. Uh, a special thanks to anyone who's given to support the Joyous Lights Project, uh, our Christmas lights that have Joyous been going lights. up. Uh, you all have been pretty generous, so I think we're going to have to get a few more uh, and hang. And uh, we're really brightening up our neighborhood in some fun ways. And so thank you for that. Uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, as we give thanks for God's blessings and for your generosity, we'll continue with an offering prayer. And so I'll uh, put the words up here, and I invite you to join me in praying this offering prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Well, we have one last song and then some announcements following that. Uh, but as we reach the end of the service, uh, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Taylor, any word about this last song? Joy to the world. <laughs> no, you know this one. Sing along with us. All right, here we go. <laughs> Joy to the world. Joy to the world. <laughs> yes. All the boys and girls. Well, you can come back tonight. Yes. If you are interested, we would love to have you come to worship tonight at 630 on our Facebook feed and our Zoom feed. And it will be an Advent Vesper service uh, using Holden Evening Prayer and just a brief, I think it's about 20, 25 minutes. Um, so fairly brief service. So join us for that. We'd love to have you here. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get a chance to pick up an Advent wreath, there are three little kits left. And so I'm going to leave them right outside the door. And so if you would like to get one of those, if you haven't picked one up yet, please come and do so. There are three left. Um, and we are ha we'll have our devotion book, and that should be ready tomorrow afternoon is what we're hoping. Uh, <laughs> yep. We're still waiting for the last two to come in, so we're hoping that those come in today so we can get them in there tomorrow morning. Awesome. Yeah, and so that'd be a great way, whether you have an Advent wreath or not, to do daily devotions written by uh, members of Elk River Lutheran. And so it'll be a oh, great be nice. uh, theme where they're sharing memories and uh, 
favorite parts of the Christmas and Advent season. And so uh, we'll really encourage you to check those out uh, in the weeks ahead as we head towards Christmas. You can find those on our website, but I think yep. we're going to have a few hard copies printed as well. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, and finally, I wanted to say a word about uh, Joan Campbell's memorial service is later today at 2 o'clock. And for that, um, it won't be streamed on Facebook. And so if you want to come and be a part of Joan's service, uh, we invite you to follow the Zoom link. And there's instructions on our webpage, even a button with all the details about this, her service uh, at the top of our homepage right now. Uh, and so that's at 2 o'clock today, a memorial for Joan. And so we'll be on Zoom, so that'll allow us the opportunity following the service to open up for a time of fellowship fellowship where kind of like with the coffee hour um, uh, people can share and so we'll be inviting folks to share stories and memories of Joan as well and so uh, I invite you to if you aren't coming to at least uh, think of and pray for the Campbell family and uh, all of us who love Joan and are uh, grieving her here today as well. And so I think that's all the announcements uh, for uh, this week. Uh, thank you for coming to our first Advent uh, worship of the season and uh, there will be more joyous light in our future so we hope you'll be there and be a part of that joyous light uh, awesome. so with that go in peace share the good news we, we will. will thanks, thanks be, be to, god. to god thank you for joining us have a good week we'll see you next week heart attack and i thank you for joining us for worship here at Upper river Lutheran. Have a good day. Have a great week and God bless you. Bye. Hi, thanks for joining us today for worship. We're really glad you were here. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Have a fantastic day. We wish for each and every one of you a very special week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Join us next week. On behalf of the choir, thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers. Hello, this is Lori, and I want to thank you for coming today. We hope to see you next week. Have a wonderful week. God bless. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Elk River Lutheran Church today. Come back often. Thanks for joining us at worship today. Same here. See you soon. Thanks for joining us. We had a great time at Pajama Church and hope you meet with us every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. Come and have fun in your faith. Bye now. Thank you so much for coming and watching our service online. Hope you have a blessed Can't morning. Wait to see you again. God bless you. Bye. Bye. We hope that you stay safe, stay well, and stay in touch. And stay in touch with each other as well as you can. Thank you for joining with us. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>